with that. I'll talk a bit about practicalities and, and then we'll, um, yeah, ho hopefully have a, a, a good um, length of time for, for questions as, as well. Does that all sound OK? Um, great. Well, let's let's hand over to you, Kate, then to talk about the role. Hi everyone, uh, lovely to see you all. It's it's great that there's so much interest. Um, I, I'll try not to sort of dwell on this for too long because I know we've sent you out a lot of information and paper and, and that goes into this in more detail. But I, I just wanted to sort of set the scene in terms of what being a council member means, legally speaking, because it is, is an important legal role, both as a company director and as a trustee for the charity and and both both those roles have have responsibilities in law under under company law and under charity law so when you become a council member you get uh put on the company directors register at company's house and you also get put on on the register of trustees with the charity commission both in england and wales and and with uh the office of the scottish charity regulator too and there's responsibilities under both company law and charity law. These ones that I've got here that I'm going to talk through are largely the sort of um, charity law um, uh, responsibilities, but, but these are also reflected in company law as, as company directors. And <clears throat> the primary purpose under both charity and, and company law, or primary responsibility that you have, is really to act in the best interests of the organisation and to make sure it's fulfilling its purpose. So its purpose or its objectives, those are the things that are set out in the charity or the company's founding document, its articles of association. And at the beginning of that document, it describes what that organisation is set up to do. So our sort of vision and our values are all aligned with that as an organisation and as company directors and as trustees in meetings, it's your responsibility to be thinking about that purpose purpose to be making sure that you know our strategy our sort of big programs of work that they're, they're aligned with those purposes that you know we're directing our resources towards them um, so that comes on to the resources making sure we're managing those effectively so that's uh, are we managing our people our assets our finances effectively asking the questions of management around that you receive budget reports around those around spending um, and 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 holding management to account for the way that they manage those resources. Um, you need to make sure the organisations are compliant with the law and meet its legal they meet its legal duties. So there's a lot of standard things around this, a lot of very administrative stuff that that um, we have to do each year around filing reports to to Companies House, to the Charity Commission, to, to the trade union, uh, with numbers about the organisation, information about the organisation, and it's it's the council members' duties to, to get to grips with that detail. Uh, with the advice of management, they don't do it on their own, they have support from management and the finance team and uh, the various directors in the organisation to do that too, but there's there's legal filing duties and if we we miss dates and deadlines there's you know we get in trouble for those so so it's part of council's responsibility to make sure that we do that but also more widely things like health and safety law and um uh, and equality law all of that kind of thing as well um also uh, have a legal responsibility to act honestly and, and with integrity in, in the role. So this is really sort of about values and uh, behaviours in terms of what it means to, to be a trustee, uh, to act with care and skill, so to bring the skills that you have to, to council meetings, to that role. I mean, I guess essentially what this one means is you can't phone it in. Uh, it, it is important to take care. You have to sort of get to grips with the information that, that that's shared with you and and, and give that, that thought and, and careful thought when you're making decisions. Um, and being accountable. So that's being accountable to our members. Uh, so being accountable to our regulators as well who regulate the organisation. So there's and accountable to the public as well as a charity. So there's uh, several levels of accountability there and there's different ways in which we can show and demonstrate that. But it's part of council's role to sort of 
uh, be on top of us about that accountability, to, to be that voice of, of making sure we have that, that link to members being transparent around our decision making. Uh, so I've rattled through that, but I know you've got lots of information in your packs. And if you're wanting to dive into more detail, then the Charity Commission is a really excellent resource on their website around the duties of being a charity trustee. So they've got lots of information on there. That's the kind of thing that you'll receive in your induction pack. Uh, if you're successful, there'll be a lot more information around that um, if you join as a council member. Uh, and Apologies, I rattled through very rapidly, but I will uh, hand over to Steve now. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Kate. As you just say, did, did anyone have any kind of immediate questions of Kate? We will have uh, a bigger opportunity at the end, but was there anything that immediately came into someone's mind that people wanted clarifying? OK, well, let, let's move on to the, the role description. And, and I guess there's, there is some overlap in, 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 in what I'll say here with um, what Kate's just described in terms of the responsibilities. Um, um, and, and this is a, a kind of precede version of, of what you've, you've got in your, your, your pack. I suppose the first point, it, it is about setting strategy. And actually, it's probably with the senior leadership team actually setting strategy. I don't think council kind of goes off in, on its own and and, and does that. It, it, it is something that, that is very much done jointly um, with the, the, the leadership team. And I, and I suppose the point here is that, you know, you, you are effectively meeting every kind of three months um, as, as a, a council. So the level at which you engage has to be really kind of, you know, high level, the direction of the organisation, the longer term of, of objectives that, that we have, sort of tracking the progress against those, um, those, those objectives um, are all um, really, um, important parts of the job and, and actually you know a lot of a lot of um, our, our council meetings are are thinking about kind of strategy and those big picture issues you know how are we growing our membership how are we promoting the the the, the profession um how are we influencing um health and social care those those kind of questions the second one is around overseeing financial plans that that actually is it, at the moment, we're talking about our five year financial strategy. So, you know, we have a strategy at the moment, which is um, a growth strategy. So we are in the short term running kind of budget deficits. We're spending more money than we actually are bringing in every year. But we're doing that to kind of grow, growing our membership, diversifying our income, looking to, to get in sort of rental income from from the building. So quite a, a kind of complex interplay of lots of different um, um, um financial um programs there that that you know we we hope will lead to a new equilibrium where income equals expenditure um uh, um down the line in, in in two or three years time so so it's it's not a requirement by any means to be um you know to be an accountant to be on 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 council and you know i've got an accountant in my team and, and there's an audit committee as well separately which does have financial people that kind of advises council on on some of these issues um but you know there is some responsibility of, of, of looking at the kind of overall financial health and 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 i guess the kind of wisdom of the strategies that we're Kind of implementing, so yeah, ensuring that the um, organisation is is run e e effectively. Um, quite a bit about risks, risk management. Um, what are the things that could go wrong? What are the things that could damage the profession? What are the things that could damage our organisation? Um, what is reasonable for us to put in place to to mitigate against all uh, all, all of that? And kind of how are we doing? So again, a big chunk of of every meeting actually will be thinking about about risks. We'll be looking at the, 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 those financial statements. And I guess what that you know that's signing off annual reports. That's that's a big um, item in our in our next meeting. And um, trustees are accountable for doing that. Um, yeah, providing support and challenge to 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 the chief exec and and. SLT and, and I think it's I think that's that's well worded in terms of those both sides of the coin you know at, at, at times it is 
a case of putting pressure on me and my team. You know, why aren't we achieving these these plans faster? What more could we could could can we be doing? Do um, you know what what changes do we need to be making to be more successful? But it is also about providing support at times, perhaps when um, um, you know the the team need a bit of protection or or cover from from some of the flack that's flying around or just some of the challenges. And I guess almost knowing the difference about when to provide the support and when to provide the challenge is is one of the kind of key skills um, for, for for the board really. Yeah, ensuring that organisations' governance arrangements are, are are effective. So, as you know, at the moment we're going through a, a governance review, wanting to make sure that we really do comply with best practice. We've got Kate to advise us. We have lawyers who who advise us as well. But you know, the council need to have that kind of mindset. Um, really, you know, that that communication to to the membership um, and and listening to the membership as well and ensuring there is always that kind of strong membership voice in our in our discussions is is really crucial um and, and that last bit perhaps goes without saying but being a champion for rcot and the profession um so th that's a summary of the kind of responsibilities and, and then in terms of the sort of skills and abilities the sort of characteristics um i mean i like this first one visible passion and commitment to the organization's strategy and values I, i'm not quite sure what that means maybe everyone needs to get a tattoo with the kind of rcot logo on it or something and that, that's your visible um demonstration I'm, I'm 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 not sure but i think it you know i i, I think um I and mean, of course, you know, it's up to the electorate who they want to be on on kind of council. I think I would say, and, and we're looking for people who, you know, who've definitely got an appetite for change and they're going to push and challenge and pr prompt and conjole us to, to be better. I guess if you kind of hate RCOT and you want to completely change it and, and you know, it, it, it might be quite tough doing that from from council. I, I I think you know you will find it easier if you do have that kind of passion and commitment to broadly with the organisation's strategy. Um, Kate talked about um, those legal responsibilities that that you have, and um, you know I didn't want to overplay that, but you know ultimately the buck does stop with the charity directors. You do have that kind of overall responsibility you know you see that at play don't you sometimes when you see when you read about organizations that have gone wrong i suppose and and then it's in the front in the pages of the newspapers you know were trustees asking the right questions were they given the right information by the leadership team did they have um the wool pulled over their eyes could you know the, all of those kind of issues I, I i guess but there is that yeah there is a weighty responsibility here um working effectively as a member of a team um but also bringing that objective and independent perspective so you know and again that's that's a, a a test when to know when to be a you know when to go along with the the the, the kind of consensus view and, and and when perhaps to push um an outlier view um and, and that can be helpful so you know i think that that is important that confidence to be able to um express an, an, an opinion, um, an ability to think logically and objectively and to analyse financial and other information to identify key issues, make balanced judgments and effective decisions. I mean, just, you know, I think we need to be straight with you and say there's there's a lot of reading that comes with this, you know, when our, our papers are electronic now, so we're not quite sure how big the packs are. I think when they used to be paper and used to sort of drop through people's letterboxes, it was perhaps a bit more obvious how, um, how many trees have been cut down for, for each um, kind of council meeting? It's, it's a bit harder to tell now that they're, they're kind of digitally. But you know, it is it, it is time to to read through those papers. But more importantly, I think to to think about you know what are the big issues that that are raised by the papers? What are the concerns you have? How do your colleagues feel about that? Do they share your concerns? And you know, bringing those kind of views to the the table. Um, tact, tact and diplomacy, ability to listen, engage and challenge effectively. Well, you're you're all OTs, so you all have that in spades, don't you? And um, and the, yeah, that last point, willingness to devote the necessary time and, and effort. And we'll perhaps talk a bit about that um, later on. Um, so before I hand over to a death, did anybody want to raise anything from what I've just said? 
Okay, let's go over to you then, Adeth, for the next next bit. Hi again, everyone, and um, I'm going to talk you through what a council meeting actually looks like. So this was our September 2023 council meeting. And as you can see, it's an all day meeting. So we start pretty early in the morning and we finish <laughs> after four. Usually sometimes we run over slightly, but we try to finish within the allocated time. We do have a break for lunch and then we take two short breaks in between. So our council meeting normally have reports, as Steve just indicated, we do have lots of reading and the papers will be distributed prior to council meeting. So you will have an opportunity to read and digest the information and make note of any questions or anything you need clarification for, etc. So we'll have a set of management reports at the beginning and we'll start with Steve's report. And as he said, we normally, you know, as council members, the responsibility is on us to challenge. So uh, uh, a good example is um, our building has laid empty for a little while and at each council meeting, Steve would be challenged to say, well, what's happening with the building? When are we going to get tenants in and so on? So, and the report would normally contain any sort of, it would highlight anything that we need to be aware of as council in terms of um, any challenges that the organization is likely to face. And so that would be part of the, the reporting. Would also have what we call a risk report, which is we've got a list of organizational risks, whether that be financial, reputational, whatever the risk is, we've got it on our risk agenda. And so we would go through that as part of our council meetings as well to identify any risks that have changed, whether that be a risk that's have sort of um, gone up, um, maybe reputationally or financially. And so we would go through those reports and also have an opportunity to ask questions and to make decisions. The organizational performance report would also be presented. And this would be where we're looking at our organizational priorities and we're matching it against our strategy to see if we're on target to meet some of our, our objectives. And we'll also have management accounts reports. So all of these reports are really big pieces of information that's sent through to us. And we have an opportunity, as I say, to read them prior to council meeting and to sort of digest them so we can ask any questions and be assured. And Kate, who, who sort of um, manages our meetings, Kate is very good in terms of some of these reports we'll have to vote on. Some of them are for information and so on and so she would mark at the top of the paper those that we need to vote for those that we need to just have for information etc and so we then had in our september meeting the beginnings of our governance review as you all know we're undertaking a review at the moment and so that was an opportunity at council to sort of look at some of the 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 issues and the items that came under that review and to decide following recommendation from the governance review steering group in terms of how we're going to take some of it forward and to vote on the necessary um, bits that we needed to vote on. Budget and plans, as you know, finance is always important. So our head of finance would also present the budget report and the plan and whether we're on target to meet the plan, what our expenditure is looking like and so on. So it would help to have a good understanding, but you have an opportunity to also ask questions of, of all our managers because all our senior leadership team do attend our council meetings. In our September meeting, we also spoke about our membership growth and retention. And if you remember, we had a membership survey recently and we're still pulling together what our membership offer is going to look like. So that's it's, a, it's an agenda item until we get to the point where we have got a membership offer and it's been voted and voted on by council and then it's sort of shared and disseminated with the members. So that will be on our, our agenda items until we get to that point. You will have recognized that we've just had our workforce strategy um, quite recently. So that was on our September, again, our September council meeting where we had an opportunity to look at the strategy prior to it being published. And we had an opportunity to ask questions and the senior leadership team had an opportunity to, to sort of involve council in some of those um, outcomes and some of the outputs from that workforce strategy. And so we were able to publish that quite recently. Also as part of our council meeting, we do have a section where Unison 
um, will report back. And at the moment, we have a joint working project where we're trying to work quite closely with Unison because some of our members are still struggling with the relationship that we have with Unison. So we knew we needed to do some work. But also one of the recent examples is with our pay, the pay review and all the um, all the strikes that happened last year, UNISO was very much involved on our behalf, and so they were attending our meetings and keeping us updated as to how things were going. At the moment, we're doing some work around the ARCOT culture amongst our workforce at ARCOT, and so they, Steve would normally give us an update, and there was an update given at the September Council meeting. We were able to ratify our complaints policy at our September meeting as well, and so Often as part of the process and as part of our meetings, we'll have a number of policies that will come either for review or for ratification. Council members will have an opportunity to have a look at those and to make any comments or to raise any issues before it's ratified. And then we'll have an opportunity to vote for them and then they'll be ratified as, as policy. You will also be aware that we had recently delivered on a equality, diversity and belonging strategy, and that took a, a while. So that was also an agenda item that came to council several times before we were able to ratify it as a strategy and before it was, um, before the strategy was delivered. We also had a president and vice president proposal at our last council meeting and that was around some historical presidents and vice president that we had within the organization where we felt we needed to review that process and that we needed to do something slightly differently to sort of um so we're looking at champions for the organization etc so that was also looked at as part of the 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 count the, the council meeting and the election of the vice chair was also done as part of our September council meeting. So because we only have four council meetings per year, there's a lot of information to get through within that day. But as I said before, you do have the opportunity to get the information prior to the meeting so you can read and digest and, and ask any questions. So lots of reading, but it also gives you quite a lot of information to help you to make those decisions that we need to make as council. My hand back to Kate. No, I think it's you for the next one as well, actually. Oh, it's okay. me. Oh, right. OK. <laughs> um, you might not be able to see Odeth because I'm screen sharing, but we've got a question from Mary. Um, hi, Mary. Hi. Th hi thank Mary. you. And apologies. I'm in the. Hi, Odeth. Thank you. Apologies. I'm in the car, so I hope you can hear me well. It sounds yeah. like a really comprehensive meeting. <laughs> um, but my question is more so in terms of as council members what's the expectation that members are doing other activities so for example the workforce strategy if i was still if i was involved in the advisory group would that just be a, a conflict of interest would that be declared or is there expectations that actually some of the other roles that are happening in, in the in rcot as members you're a bit more distant if that makes sense so you probably missed the beginning when Kate explained that even though you're council members, you're also sitting on various committees and we have various committees that work alongside some of our big pieces of work. So, for example, we've got council members who sit as part of our governance review committee. We've got council members sitting at our air committee, which is our risk. We have council members sitting on research committees and so on. So as a council member, even though you only have four council meetings per year, there's also other demands on your time. And the workforce strategy group would be another one that a council member would probably sit on as well. So there won't be a conflict of interest because you're there to provide mm. an oversight. But, but yeah, no, I think that's that's good. But Mary, I think you're also alluding to where you're perhaps volunteering on other groups and, and right. might want to continue to do those 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 things. So, that's, so yeah, yeah. So okay. I, I think in that, that situation, I think it's fine. I think it's just being clear. Well, probably two questions. One, when you are doing that, are you doing it as a council member or are you doing it as a member, a volunteer, a, a, a kind of representative, just so everyone's clear about that? And I think secondly, it's just about, it's, you know, have you got time to do all those things? And it might be that when people do become on the council, they they might drop some of their other um, responsibilities, but but they might not. And I think that's, that's really up to every individual I, I, I think you know it's good for council to be made up of people who are involved in lots of these activities um 
outside of, of, of council. So, yeah. Uh, and it, just to sort of chip in on the, the conflict of interest bit, you know, as a council member, it's about active interests of the organisation. So the conflicts come in where you're acting in the interests of a, another person or another organisation. And if you're involved with pieces of work with a different volunteer hat on for RCOT to sort of help deliver workforce strategy or being on one of our EDP, EDP panels or, or whatever else it might be, these are all things that are also in the interest of the organisation and the membership. So it's very unlikely that there would be a conflict there. It's much more likely that, that those things are... are and synthesis and you know all acting you know part and parcel of us all doing things for the organization so uh, there would it would be unlikely to be an issue in that respect i should have said as well that at every council meeting there's an opportunity to declare any interest in any particular topic so any of the items that are there you have an opportunity as a council member to declare um whether there's a conflict or whether you're not comfortable with that bit um prior to the item being discussed. So, and the opportunity is given throughout the entire council meeting as well. Thank you. Should we go to the next one, Kate? So it's around decision-making. And yeah. when, I, when I joined council, I, I wish I'd known what I know now before I joined council. So I, I ended up writing a poem that I call my two faces. So when I, I joined council, um, I wear two faces. So one is as chair of council because, and when I sit within that space, I am bound by a lot of duty and legalities and so on. And, and it's about putting the, the best interests of the organization first and foremost. And then my other face is my regular face that I would do. And there are times when the two sort of, um, there's a bit of conflict because it might be against my own personal views, but I need to put the, 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 the organization first. And so I am, I usually say that I'm happiest when those two areas collide. Sometimes they collide, sometimes they don't. But it's about remembering that it's a collective decision-making process and it doesn't stop you from having your own personal opinions. What it does encourage you to do though is to share those opinions as part of the council make the decision-making process. And then once the vote is taken, you may not agree with the overall decision that's been made, but the onus would be on you as a member of council to sort of stick to that decision and to support it and to sort of um, help to, to, to move things forward. So you, in terms of decision-making, we're talking about that collective process wherein the decision is made by council and then we act as one. And that's a very important part of the, of the trustee role. So we're, we're told that we need to be prepared to challenge assumptions because sometimes we have pre, pre, preconceived ideas about what um, certain things mean. And a good example um, in terms of um, challenging assumptions and, and being prepared to engage in constructive debate and challenge is most recently we, we, we've got the situation with the conflict in Israel and Gaza. And as you know, from if you followed um, if you followed on the internet on things like Twitter and so on, you'll notice that the, the profession is sort of divided in terms of the response. And so council had a lot of um, decisions and discussions around how do we respond? Um, because there was a lot of um, pressure on council to respond. And so those are some of the areas where you find those challenging conversations and decisions and having to sort of seek members' views and then come to a decision. It's not always easy, but as a trustee, that's one of the things that you'll be expected, expected to do. It means asking those difficult and unpopular questions and decisions sometimes. And as we said before, it doesn't have to be unanimous, but once the decision is made, all council members must support it and carry out that decision. Have we got any questions? Okay, so this is just our, our last slide and then we can open it up for, for discussion, but just to talk about some of the, the, the practicalities. So as, as we've already said, um, four full day meetings, um, 
we do um, pay expenses for people to get to, to meetings. If if people are going to travel a long way, then um, we'll we'll put people up overnight as 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 well. Um, some actually increasingly more of these meetings are online. I, I mean, I think I think it's important that we continue to meet face to face. So it's trying to get a balance between sort of online and um, face to face meetings. We do have a, a, a fifth day which is that strategy day and, and I think that that is a really important day I mean the the agenda that, that you just um, that Adeth just talked us through you might kind of think oh which but we're responding to you know someone else's agenda here or we're just giving kind of comments um, on, on on papers I think the strategy day is a really good opportunity for um, for the council to, to really think about the longer term, what do we want to achieve? What kind of message do we want to convey to our, our leadership team? You know, what 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 do what is our vision for the organization and for the profession? And, and how can we turn that into an into a plan? Um, yeah, I mean, don't don't underestimate the, the the meeting papers and preparation. There is there is a lot. And and I mean, and just to say, you know, we've got a meeting coming up in a couple of weeks time and as a leadership team we've already had a couple of meetings putting the papers together going through them um checking with pitch them at the right level and you know so a lot goes into to developing all of this to really make sure that we can have kind of constructive um conversations we we don't want to bombard you with too much information but we want to make sure that you're well informed to be able to to pick out the kind of key strategic issues um yeah that it would be um, unrealistic to just say it is about those four full meetings, though, and, and you would find there are other, you know, shorter meetings required. We had a, a an hour meeting yesterday, actually, just because there's something coming up to council. It's quite a complex thing. You know, we've got some big, very big, actually, um, plans around sort of technology and how we can really improve the the, the kind of member response member offer um, and we needed to go through that in quite a bit of detail with some council members before the, the council meeting so that was an extra meeting but it could well be that you know SLT members senior leadership team meeting members just want to ring you up bounce an out idea around with, with you test some thinking get some feedback from you so you know hopefully there's always this ongoing kind of dialogue um, really but, but between us um, so being part of project boards, yes, there's the governance review, workforce, planning the conference, managing our awards, you know, a range of things. There are subcommittees, our audit investment risk committee, um, um, the research um, foundation as, as well. Um, quite a lot of emails, actually, um, that, that, that go out, I guess. You know, quite often there'll be decisions that perhaps, have, you know, they are formalities, really, but you know, the organisation can't necessarily wait till the next council meeting. And so Kate will be sending out a res resolution. And we we, tr we we try to be reasonable and recognise that everybody is, has got busy kind of day jobs and, and this isn't always people's first priority. So we'll give people a week or so to, to kind of respond. But, you know, there is that part of the, 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 the job. Um, and I guess it is just about, you know, being proactive. It isn't just about coming to the meetings. It is about you know, emailing me or getting on the phone and say, hey, Steve, you know, I'm, I've, I heard this last week. You know, I'm worried about this or, um, you know, just thinking, how could we be responding to this opportunity that's coming ahead of us? You know, so it, it is kind of constructively contrib contributing to, um, to, to the organisation. And then, you know, this is different and it's different for, for, for people. But once, once you are, um, on on council you know you could well have conferences regions um different groups just just you know, ringing you up and asking you to come and speak at one of their events or give a presentation or give an update or or or, something. or you might want to do more of those actually just to make sure that you're sort of in touch with the membership and and keeping your ear close to to the ground so there are all those kind of opportunities as 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 well um OK, I think that's probably everything that we wanted to go through. We've kind of bombarded you with a lot of stuff and, and hopefully that it's mainly kind of repeating things that you've read. But any kind of questions, comments um, that people have have got? Have we 
before we scared you off and, and if, if we have I hope we haven't because this is this is a really really exciting time for our COT there's so much stuff going on so many opportunities for us and I think it's a, a great opportunity for volunteers to get involved at this kind of strategic level at such a, a crucial stage to give a lot back to the profession and the organisation but also I think it's great for people's personal development as well actually to have these this responsibility as well lots of council members have said that to me um, that's been their kind of experience so yeah we've, we've tried to perhaps give you some of the heavy weighty time consuming things but but we haven't wanted to scare anyone off at all um, but it's just to make sure that people do understand um, what's what's involved um, yeah, I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't read the names. We've got... Um... Ali Bogo has got her hand up. All right, brilliant. Uh, yeah, good. Yeah, firstly, sorry, I joined late, a bit late because I was coming from another meeting. And I am Ali Bogo. I am an occupational therapist, obviously, where uh, even though I my main job is with NHS England now, the AHP... Uh, Southeast region team. Uh, I, I thought I'd attend because I've I've read the papers. The 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 the, the, the I've looked at the pack the pack that explains the rule and everything that you just went through. And only because you said it it might feel a bit uh, like repetition. It doesn't actually for me. It brought uh, life. To what I've already read. It was very, very helpful. Thank you. Good. Thank you. It's great. Any any other? Yeah, Mary. You're, you're... Uh, hi, so I think this is more for um oh dear. Um in the next um or in, from your experience in the last three years, what has been the most challenging in being a chair? So I'm thinking like, it's, it sounds really positive, really encouraging. It's so much, I can see so much benefit. Some of the challenges I'm hearing is the time commitment is, um, it's been really considerate of the time commitment. But from your reflections, what do you think is the, the most challenging part of being, not maybe not a chair, but just being part of a council member? I think for me, it's probably, the time commitment is challenging, but I, I try to balance that out as, as I go alongside my, my other roles. But I think for me, the main, the ch most challenging bit is making sure that we have a good handle on our risks, whether that okay. be organizational, reputational, financial, or whatever. Because sometimes things will crop up and um, it catches you by surprise. So it's about that looking ahead and trying to make sure that we're protecting the organization as best as we can. So those are the bits that would normally keep me awake at night. For example, when we didn't have our building rented, you know, it was um, mm -hmm. it's a big challenge because we knew a lot of money went into getting that building up to speed. So that yeah. was for me, that was a worry. Yeah. But um, yeah, we just just things like those that, that sort of yeah. keep you awake a little bit and making sure that you're doing the best and making the best decisions for the organization. Yeah. Thank you. Sarah. Yeah, hello. Um, thank you. It is, it is very interesting. It does, certainly does bring bring it to life. And Adeth, I, I feel like that you give your, hearing your sort of personal experience, the actual, you know, the, the reality of it is, is really helpful. Um, I just wondered, I'm being cheeky really whilst you're all here, is to ask if there is any sort of suggestions or top tips on completing our sort of nomination forms that you Obviously, we're all coming from different experiences and different backgrounds, but anything that, you know, <laughs> you'd be particularly looking for? I mean, it's, you know, the question is, what will, what will all the members be looking for? Because they're the people who <laughs> are going to be vote. voting. So, so I, I, I don't know, Kate, whether you, you have anything, you've probably read lots of these in, in your time. I, I think it is about being personable and, you know, something quite personal. And so people get some sense of who you are and, and what you're passionate about um, and what you, you know, what your kind of aspirations for the profession and RCOT kind of look like. You know, I, I think it's 
you know, I, I think sometimes you read them and it's kind of, you know, I've been a manager of this and I was head of that and I was involved in this board and and I was a milk monitor at school and, you know, all of these these kind of things, which I, I don't know, just a bit flat, I think, um, you know, brilliant. But actually, what are you going to do with the role? What's what 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 excites you? So that I think that would be my a, a advice. Um, yeah. Kate, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I, th I think yeah, I think that's very true. And I just I'm just sort of thinking about your um your statement of death when you ran and you know very much on a platform with a passion for sort of um EDB and and you know what the organisation could do to further that. So you you had a real cause, didn't you, which sort of brought to life what your what your passion was. Um, you know, I said not everyone's going to have the same kind of cause. Um, and but but yeah, that sort of personality that sort of tells people a little bit about who you are. And and interestingly though, I think you know your top tips on writing an election statement are, are going to and winning over members in the electorate is very different from what you'd put in a a cover letter for a job role. So potentially you could mm -hmm. write something that that totally wins over the electorate, but isn't you know. If we want to know that you're going to govern the organisation well and challenge SLT on finances, and I don't think that's necessarily what what members want to hear about. But they do want to know that you're going to be able to sort of, you know, look after the organisation on their behalf and um, and yeah, be able to push back SLT a bit, probably yeah, without yeah. without the sort of without the sort of CV side of things, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's about trying to find that connection with the members, isn't it? Because as you say, it's the members who vote. It's finding that bit that you're really, really passionate about that sort of relates to the, the profession as a whole and, and, and selling that and selling that to the members. Yeah, I think we have, I mean, we are um, not this year, but in sort of future years, we are looking at how we can just kind of improve some of these kind of processes and whether we go for, I don't know, some sort of hustings or something, you know, whereby at least people can can hear from you or even ask you questions or, or something maybe the the future but um at the moment it is just your statement i mean i'd say test it out with your colleagues actually and mm -hmm. um and, and that's a good idea but maybe maybe like a a, a viva voce maybe a someone standing on a <laughs> and be, <laughs> be asked questions by the members you know yeah. that you'd certainly see where, how someone um fares with that but that's great yeah. thank you ever so much it's really helpful yeah. thank you all Kate, were you going to just before? So can I, yeah, can I just quickly point? add to that, just to that point, because it, it just occurred to me as we're speaking. So this year, I think in previous years when we've put out the candidate statements, it's very much just been all your statements with a simple letter saying, please participate in the election process. But what we are doing this year, because we think it's important that people understand what they're voting for and what the role is. So we will be including, you know, the, the sort of the main page of the role description and possibly, you know, a summary of, of what the trustee duties are, because actually, yeah, it's about also informing our members what responsibilities you'll have as a council member. So just to sort of bear that in mind that members will have a bit of context about what that role is, which we haven't provided to them previously. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa. Hi there. Um, yes, I, I think it kind of follows on for the, from the previous question, I just wondered whether there were any particular thoughts around when somebody's ready for this kind of position at the st what stage in their career, if you're not actually already in like a, a big managerial position, but you're more uh, clinical practice and education, as opposed to, you know, being in charge of large budgets in a managerial position, what are the thoughts around um, readiness preparedness of role yeah that's a great question um and i don't think with, there's no kind of simple rule of thumb about that you know I, I think it is you know there will be um a, you know the next meeting a, a business case for an it for a quite big investment in in it and so I don't think it's a level of senior seniority, but I think it's more just this ability to not be phased by that kind of stuff, to be able to read things analytically, to to ask questions if you don't understand 
um, staff. So I think it's it's more your level of confidence, probably as much as you know. And clearly, that's shaped by experience. But it's not just your 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 kind of it, it, experience. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if that's helpful. Adeth, do you have a, a view on that? Yeah, it doesn't mean you have to be a senior leader, as Steve said. Just reiterated, it's about your idea to synthesize information and to be quite clear in your head. This is what the profession needs, or you know, you will you will have a view, but it's around making sure that we're protecting the governance and making sure we're protecting the profession mm. in its entirety. Really, so yeah. as long as you've got a passion for that and you've got a passion for flying the OT flag and 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 um, thing, and you're you're happy to contribute to some of those difficult discussions and decisions, then then that's to me that's half the battle won. Thank you. That's Sir, really helpful. Right. Sir Skuma. Hello, all. thank you. I, I firstly would like to thanks, uh, thank you all for this uh, session because I, I second Malibugo and Sarah's comments on it. This is very useful. I have a couple of questions. The, the first question was um, related to the function of RCOT in terms of have there been any independent agency evaluation of the uh, um, organization as a whole before? And, and what has been uh, the kind of uh, inputs from, from those uh, independent evaluations of the organization? I mean, no, I'm just thinking, I mean, not, no, there haven't. And I think, I think that's, you know, the, the regulation of charities uh, is, is pretty light, actually. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's, that's good in some ways, but from a, council perspective it does mean that there's no one else who's going to come and do, do the job for you actually um you know it, it has to be from within that we're going to kind of identify what the kind of um, issues and and themes and concerns um might might be right right thanks Steve. the second question is about uh, the the amount of networks that we have uh, for rcot within the uk and outside the uk as well um, so have there been any uh, kind of uh, activities that's already been completed or, or has there been any kind of uh, aspirations towards building the network within as well as outside uh, the uk i mean certainly outside the uk i mean a, a death's just come back from a conference in the states and and um, meets up regularly with chairs from the other um, a number of the other um, particularly the larger organizations i do the same with the chief execs from from other organizations we're obviously involved in the world federation and the, the european um kind of council as as well i'll be honest with you i, I think because we probably are one of the biggest international organizations. It's very easy to be quite self-contained, actually, um, and, um, and and perhaps not as open to to input that we could get from others. But I think that's something we need to to um, think about, actually. Um, yeah, do, Adath, do you want to comment on on, on that? You're, you're muted, Adath. <laughs> if I could have a penny every time I was muted, I tell you, I'd be rich. <laughs> yeah, I miss a bit of the, I miss a first, I miss a second bit of what Shuresh Kumar said about whether we had any market evaluation type stuff. Was that what the question was? Oh, that's the first question. Not it. So this was not market evaluation, but an, an independent uh, organization evaluation of RCOT before. Oh, right. Yeah, and Steve had answered we hadn't. <laughs> But we, we get Do you think I mean, we we're need doing one? a report on GDPR at the moment. We've got some yeah. external consultants who are looking at, at that. And I think that's that's part of the kind of governance role actually through um and, and through the audit committee as well. And and you know that reports to the board and of the council and, and their council members on the audit committee is you know, where do we need that external um Excellent. assessment or accreditation? Yeah, you know, it might be data protection, it might be health and safety, it might be risk management in general. It might be we we we've done a lot of work around investments because mm -hmm. you know you're you're um if, if you 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 would be responsible for our kind of five million pounds investment portfolio. Now we're not uh, clearly not expecting a council to be fantastic investment managers, but 
but but know where to go to get the kind of advice and to ask the right questions on on on, on all, all of all of that so so there's lots of external input into the organization but normally it's us asking for it rather than people kind of descending on us and and volunteering um, it yeah and sure. and doing a yeah sure. doing an offstead we don't get, have an offstead done to us <laughs> thank you both Anything else? Anything in there? I think you've stunned everybody into silence, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. It's an exciting <laughs> role, and we'd be happy to welcome you all on board <laughs> if you feel it's something that you want to give some time and, and then think. You do get exposed to a lot of different things. Um, and it's nice to engage. I, uh, the bits I like, I enjoy most, is the engagement with the members, because you get to go out and about and meet members where they are as well, and you get to understand some of the pressures and some of the challenges that they're facing. And it's really nice to sort of keep in touch with the membership to make sure that you're actually doing what you need to do to deliver on their behalf. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. OK, well, it seems like we've probably come to a, a natural end. I mean, I think just I mean, first of all, just to say thank you for you know just, just expressing an interest, actually, because I think that, that that really gives us a great encouragement um, and it'd be you know brilliant for you to to go ahead into the next stage of the process. But, but actually, even if, if you do decide to to kind of pull out of the process, it would just be really helpful just to get a little bit of feedback on on why you know you know because i thought you know i don't know this seemed a bit heavy or i wasn't sure i was experienced enough or you know just it'd be just useful to get some kind of sense of that i think just to help us you know how we kind of pitch things moving forward so i think you've got kate and angela's email addresses probably so um just it would be useful any kind of feedback you have on the, the process um would, would be good yeah so two more we've got some hands going up again um We've got Malibogo first and then Susan. Brilliant. Yeah. Malibogo. Uh, hi. Uh, it's very sorry to come in at last hour, but um, I just wondered, uh, I read from what I was reading, it looked like the council roles are different. And do we need to be specific in which one we are interested in? And another thing with the uh, the the project um, the bots the project bots how how do we then do we express an interest once we we are members in which ones we think we we our skill sets are best aligned and and passions are best aligned with or, yeah it's or like, how, it's what? either kind of volunteering or or not ducking quickly enough when um, or being volunteered when, when, the, when the opportunity comes. Kate, do you want to just talk a bit about? Yeah, because I yeah. know that we haven't touched on that, have we? But that's so, that whole kind of BAOT, RCOT. That's bit. a really a really good question, and I think for simplicity's sake, in the meeting we've we, we've just referred to council here, but. Um, you know, if, if any of you have sort of read some of the governance review materials that have come out and also sort of maybe a bit more of the, the, the detail in the documents. Yes, they're two organisations. So you're, you are sitting on two different councils. Um, historically, they have been run as a single council. So a joint meeting with with all of the meeting items mixed together, but they are two legal entities, the, the parent BAOT. And, and the charity RCOT. You don't have to express an interest between the two because at the moment the process is that you stand for election uh, via the members of BAOT to BAOT and as part of that election process, you are automatically appointed to council on RCOT. So they mirror each other at the moment in terms of their membership. But we are going through a process of um, separating out those governing bodies so that we can make sure that each of them are considering the, the, the unique interests of both those organisations. There's a lot of overlap there, 
but but it's important that, that the governing bodies have separate meetings. They might be on the same day, uh, but uh, but that we're a bit clear which business is, is for which meeting. So that would mean that when you come along to your your full day uh, for your your council meeting, what that actually is in practice is half a day is the RCOT meeting and half a day is the BAOT meeting. And if you've been looking at the governance review uh, work as well, we, we were also planning uh, to bring on board some new members to the RCOT uh, council meeting, which will become the RCOT board of trustees, which is, you know, sort of cements that purpose as, as charity trustees to, to look after the charity. But there's, there's no need to express a separate interest. As you're elected to this role, you will, will become a member of, of both those governing bodies. So I hope that that wasn't too unclear. Thank you, Susan. You're, 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 actually, are you muted? I can't, we can't hear you. It doesn't say you're muted. But. I've not got my microphone <laughs> down. That'll explain it. Sorry about that. That's right. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, sticking up uh, the side of my ear there. No, thank you very much for this. It's been really quite um, informative. And I think what I'm taking away is, you know, going forward and, and thinking about move forward and uh, applying is just the, you can see my uniform, my clinical role. I'm not, I'm not a managerial position. I'm very much full-time clinical seeing patients. So, you know, that's just a, something I'll um, obviously discuss with my my manager in terms of the time commitment and what that's going to mean for our team going forward. But, I'd, you know, I would like to hope that by taking an interest in it, that it, it would be supported, you know, that it, it, I think that would be um, hopeful, certainly. But I think as you probably realise it would be the Scottish um, position that I would be putting myself forward for. Um, but just talking about sort of interacting with the members and as this maybe this for the person who's a Scottish representative on council, is it then that, you know, is it an expectation that you, you go out and sort of liaise with the different health boards up in Scotland? Obviously, we are a lot smaller than, than England and Wales, but just wondered what the additional time commitment might be around that and unless I misunderstood something that was talked about earlier but is there an expectation to to go to different meetings that are held around like the Scottish yeah. board on its own for instance there's there's no requirement around that um what we do have I mean in, in Scotland but also in all the other nations is is we have a can't remember what they're called a, a, a policy practice and policy person so that we've just appointed someone in in Scotland um, who's who's new so she, her role is to make sure that the membership is engaged in all those meetings and to support all those activities although I'd imagine if you if you were successful that you would have a really close relationship with her that there will be times where she would say hey Susan it'd be great if you could come to this meeting in um, um, yeah, at Holyrood or, or to meet the civil servants or to come to this health board or, or, or whatever. But there wouldn't be a kind of expectation that that would be part, you know, that you would have to devote hours to doing that. It would really be, um, I think, you know, that, that would be true with every function, really. We have a team, quite a substantial team now, who are able to, to, to do the work. It, it's your opportunity to shape, influence, um, support, that that kind of work in 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 whatever ways that you can. Okay, thanks so much. That's been helpful. Thank you, Kate. I just wanted to say quickly while we're on here, if any of you are sort of, um, you know, as, as Susan said, trying to think how you you balance that with your your particular role. We've obviously got council members with a variety of of different roles. Um, uh, you know, whether that's in practice or at universities. So, um, if we can, and if any of you 
felt that you'd value, value a chat or, or an email with an existing council member about how they sort of manage that balance with their employer. I'm sure that I'm I'm volunteering them here without them knowing, but you know, provided their, their diaries are, are are available, then I'm sure they'd be sort of happy to provide a bit bit of context or information about how they go about that if that would help inform your decision making. So do follow up after the meeting if if you feel that would be mm. valuable. Yeah, similarly, I, I Def and I would be happy to meet with you on a one to one basis. And if you just wanted to just say, hey, you know, what do you think of this experience or this, you know, how does that do you, that sound? And we, we can give um, we can give feedback if that if that would be helpful. But it's, you know, it's up, ultimately it's up to you to as to whether you want to put your name forward or or, or not. Um, yeah. yeah, happy to help. So, so I think if, if you. If, is, is Angela the best point of contact? And has everyone got Angela's email address? I think if if you go through Angela, if you want to meet with any anybody, you want to get feedback, you want to talk to a council member, you want to talk to Adeth or, or me or or Kate around any of the the um, legal practicality stuff, then just just do that. And, and any feedback as well, because that you know we I don't think we've done this before, and so we're constantly trying to improve the. The, the process. So um, any feedback you have would be really helpful. Good. Well, thanks very much indeed. That's great to um, meet you all and to hear your interest and your great questions. You've got Angela's email address is, is there. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Bye. everybody, then. Have a good okay. evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.